Pardon me. But yeah, one thing that I liked about, this is a minor like piece of lore about my channel, but uh, I think earlier this year I played through, yeah, I think it was this year. Earlier this year I played through Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. One of the Lord of the Rings games, you know. And I, I commented on how like, you know, obviously Tolkien did always want the orcs to have like a cool, interesting culture and to not just be evil, an evil race. Because he didn't really, that didn't fully jive with his morals. But one thing that they did in the movies that I really like, and then later expanded upon in the games even further, is that like, the orcs do have a super, super deep, intelligent, specific culture that is unique to them. It's just that they're still totally based around being evil. Like, they're kind of just in a culture where they just get more greedy and get more violent and, you know, that sort of thing. Like, British people. And that's fine. There's one thing that I always... This this is a, a, a Tolkien headcanon that, like, I have legit gotten into arguments. I, I normally... Despite my, um... <laughs> this will be good. I don't need this to be a choke point, and it'll be more expensive to cover this area with barricades anyway, so I'm just gonna slow them down like that. faster. Sorry, it's been a while since I've played this. I think I, the last time I played it was like 2020. And we're coming up on 2023 here, so. And of course, this is a 2011 game. So I don't remember all the awesome ways that I was able to five scroll everything. So, you know, pardon me. Anyway, sorry. The Tolkien headcanon that I like will hold on to and will not throw away is that like if the orcs could get like a couple generations out from underneath people who are too aggressive and evil. And I don't even mean like Sauron and Saruman and stuff. I mean like if they got a few generations of like if you if you raised orcs in a vacuum. You would get a, a society of orcs that were all fine. You know, my theory is just that if they could just get out from underneath their their oppressors, they would be good guys, you know? And a bit of that is true in this game. Um, in as much as that they have an oppressor, they have somebody who's, you know, working for them, being mean, making them work, in fact. But that's, you know, a part of this game's diminutive story. Uh, not much room to work with here. It's a short walk for the orcs from the gate to the rift. But those acid pits will come in handy. So this is the level where they give you... They give you, uh... The wind belt, and they say, here's some acid pits. Figure it out, dummy. It's a pretty fun level. Sometimes I almost feel bad for the orcs. Not really. Here they come. By the way, the reason that you can't um, just knock up a whole bunch of barricades is because uh, if there's zero way to get through to the rifts, 
the orcs will just smash through until they find the best way to get to the rift anyway. Which will, you know, mean that the barricade was for nothing. So the Orcs Must Die series is, like, pretty good in terms of gameplay. But they had a few, like, incredibly specific and strange missteps that I don't understand. The third game, such as it is, the third Orcs Must Die game that came out was a MOBA for some reason. Hit it like that. It was like a MOBA, and so you could have like 5v5, and it meant that they had to like, or a uh, Rift Shield, by the way. Um, it meant that they had to like work harder on online stuff, and they had to have competitive online balance, and like, why? These games were awesome, super fun, you know, single player experiences. And then in the second game, you know, they introduced the ability to play co-op, and that was also fun. And, like, this game also has a pretty, like, light cast. There's the old man, who is only referred to as the old man, because that's what this character calls him. This character does not have a name, he's just called the War Man. And then there's the evil wizard who's in charge of the orcs. Who at the time was also unnamed. A little present for you. At this time was unnamed. Um There's the, you know, paladins and archers who are generic. Like they don't have characters, they're just they just are. They may as well be traps. They may as well just be a unit, you know? Um, and then I guess there's the Weavers, and then there's the Orcs. But again, the Orcs are, like, so generic that they may as well just be one person. Also, yeah, there's the barricade breaking. In this case, they're not breaking the barricade because they're trying to, like, get through. They're just taking swipes at me and hitting the barricade because I'm next to them. Something to consider when using barricades. If you have to use a barricade, sometimes it's better to not, you know, have it in a position where you need to stand next to it. And you don't get broken barricades back, so. What have you got? You made the right decision. Excellent. But yeah, and then in the MOBA, they have to introduce, you know, enough characters to at least have a 5v5 and not have any repeats. And then what's more, because every character is a war mage, they needed to name this guy. So, you know, thanks to that game, we know his name is Maximilian. But I think that's, like, one of the only places it's mentioned. It's not mentioned in the other two games. And, like, they spent a couple years doing that. And that game was called Orcs That Must Die Unchained, by the way. And it, like, it was just so weird. And, like, there were... You could even play regular, you know, more bog-standard Orcs Must Die content in it. It was possible to do a, you know, I think a one versus uh, a million orcs, or like a two versus a million orcs, and I think you could even do up to five. Because, you know, there is a bit of similarities to, like, MOBA's here. Like, compare this to, like, Smite, especially, because Smite is also a third person shooter. But it just felt like such a misstep, like... The way that I got into this game was because it was, I think, included in um, one of the Xbox Live Summer of Arcades, which, for long-time viewers of the channel or people who know me, I froth at the mouth over the, the Xbox Live um, indies.